Hello and welcome to Speak English with Christina, the place to learn fun, fluent, and easy American English. Today I'm really excited、uh, because I have a special guest on today.、Um, I'll be interviewing Leandra King, who is the creator of the Culture Sensitive Phrase Book. Because you know, in American English, especially, but also in British English. Um, and in lots of different places in the English-speaking world, politeness is really is really important. Like when you communicate with native English speakers, it's really important to be polite. And Leandra is the creator of this culture-sensitive phrase book、um, to help non-native English-speaking expats to understand. The culture that is behind the English language. So, lots of things about politeness,、um, and this is, you know, something that will help you to have better relationships.、Um, it could be professional relationships or friendships if you're trying to、um, meet, let's say, native speakers because you live in the United States or you live in a different English-speaking country. Um, she's from Barbados as well, so、uh, it's good to have a different accent from my American accent.、Uh, I think you'll really enjoy that.、Uh, so I'm going to let you enjoy this conversation. You're going to learn a lot about politeness, why it's important, how to be polite, how to be sure that you avoid being rude, even if you you don't. Mean to be rude, like you do it on not on purpose. All right, and I'll see you after the video as well. Okay, so hello, Leandra, and how are you? Hi, Christina. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So first of all, I just want to say thank you for taking some time to talk with us today,、um, especially because、um, the whole issue of politeness and sort of being sensitive to that is. In my opinion, one of the neglected aspects of English language teaching, a lot of times,、um, yes, and、definitely. so yeah, yeah, I agree. And、um, your book,、uh, the culture sensitive phrase book, is I've read it. It's absolutely awesome.、Um, so maybe just to start out, can you maybe tell us some stories or maybe some experiences? I mean, what led you to write this book, basically? Yeah. Well, first of all, thanks for having me.、Mm-hmm. And as you mentioned, the culture sensitive phrase book is about being more polite in English. Right. And the reason I really lean towards this area is because I've had experiences before where、mm-hmm. I've noticed that non-native speakers weren't as polite as they ought to be. Yeah. And it wasn't only towards me. I observed it with other native speakers, and the result that that led to how they were. Regarded how they were viewed, right? And it was not positive. So I wanted to, you know, make persons aware of the mistakes because、mm. I think that a lot of times it's unintentional、yeah. and persons aren't aware of the mistakes that they're making. Right. So that led me to, you know, my experiences and wanting others to be aware of the mistakes. That led、mm. me to wanting to create the book. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think it's it's the same.、Um... You know, I've had the same experience when I, especially, you know, as a teacher,、um, yeah. you know, when you say something, and let's say the polite way, if you don't, if someone says something to you, and you、mm-hmm. don't understand, the polite thing is to say something like "sorry" or "I didn't quite catch that," or、right. "Wait, can you say that again?"、Um, and a lot of times, people would just say like, "I don't understand," right? And especially like between the sentence. Which is very direct,、um, and the intonation, which a lot of times people don't really pay much attention to,、mm-hmm. um, it comes off as almost aggressive. Yeah, and I don't think they want to sound that way. I think it's just they they're using what they have to express the idea,、um, you know, as as directly as they can, and it comes out sounding like. Or, you know, very kind of rude.、Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah.、Um, Also to add to that, I was、yeah. having a Skype conversation with a French speaker the other day, right? And she didn't understand what I said, and her response was like, "What?" 
Yeah, and, I, yeah, like, I get that. Yeah, what? And she said it so aggressively. <laughs> I was a bit like, even though I teach polite English, I was yeah. a bit taken aback. Yeah. Like, because she said it was such, in such an aggressive manner, and I, I know she wasn't, she didn't mean it in an aggressive yeah. manner. Yeah. But she just didn't understand, and so then I had to explain to her, you know, you could so say, well, you know, sorry, I didn't catch that, and yeah, because. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, just the, going, the what? Just simple is, things like that can yeah. really create problems when you're communicating with native speakers. Uh, yeah, exactly, because it, because it, because it can be perceived in yeah. like an aggressive way. And I think you know, I like I think you know, um, in the U.S. and maybe in the English-speaking world in general, um, for example, with French people, we have this stereotype that French people are rude, right. um, <laughs> and I think it's. It comes, it maybe part of that comes from the, this notion of like, you know, w probably when American tourists are interacting with people on their visit to France, yeah, I'm sure the Americans, their French level is probably not so great. <laughs> uh, so they're speaking English to French people and the French people are maybe saying like, what, what? And they're like, ah, oh, these people yeah. are so rude. Um, <laughs> and I think that's, you know, perhaps part of the stereotype. Um, so, so yeah, so you know, in, in your opinion, like, why is it so important to be polite in English? I mean, why is it not sufficient just to express your idea? Right. Well, I think you had touched on this before, but this mm -hmm. is an area that's so often overlooked, mm -hmm. like, especially in language classes. The focus is on fluency in terms of linguistic fluency. And I find that not much attention is paid towards polite English. Right. And yes, you learn please and thank you, but polite English goes way beyond, you know, just those two basic words. Yeah. And if you want to be, if you want to have better relationships mm -hmm. with your, let's say you're working with English speaking colleagues or you have friends, if you're living in an English speaking country, you have neighbors, you have to interact with them on a daily basis. Yeah. You need to have good relationships, have a good rapport with people and, you know, also it shows good manners yeah. because you don't want to be seen as, you know, that rude expat, you know, she's so rude, he's so rude. Right. And then you will find that if you are rude, even if it's unintentional, persons start to view you differently and they, mm -hmm. they treat you differently. Yeah. And you might start to notice their attitude, maybe their attitude is changing and you don't even know what you've done wrong or why. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's so important. Um, I was thinking too that, you know, persons think in terms of fluency is expressing yourself. Right. But I've even noticed persons who, like, they have an advanced level of English. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, near native speaker, yeah, right. almost like a native speaker. And sometimes they're so rude in the way they communicate with others, even though they already have an advanced level. Yeah, so it just right. goes to show that you have to understand like the culture behind the language, mm. being more sensitive, being more tactful, th things like that. Yeah. Because if you just are able to, if you're just able to express yourself, that's yeah. not enough, but you need to actually understand, you know, the why behind certain things. Right. Yeah. 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 Because there's a lot of cultural, um, let's say expectations, I think that are, connected to this idea of politeness like yeah. what is considered polite or rude in one culture is maybe completely different in another culture yeah. um and so you just have to also be aware of that and so I mean it even goes beyond language it's even you know maybe country specific as yeah. well and that's something to um to learn when you're learning the language especially yeah, yeah. um and you talked about like people like if you're not careful about being polite, how people's attitudes um, can change towards you. Like, how how will the other people see you if you're not doing these polite things or using this polite language? Like, what happens? Right. So you might start to notice maybe the person's a bit standoffish mm. or a bit cold or mm -hmm. they don't want to spend much time around you or even maybe dismissive of you know, certain things you may say hmm. just because of that perception of rudeness and like, okay, well, I don't have time to like put up with this kind of thing. Right. And you might notice this, yeah, this standoffish kind of attitude and you're not sure why. And yeah. also I was thinking it could affect you financially because yeah. I know persons who 
because of how they express themselves, right. they lost business. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Persons ah, okay, didn't yeah. want to like become clients because of you know their attitude and how they responded. And you know, I mean, it might have been unintentional, yeah. but it could you know really affect your career as well. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's yeah. a really good point about um, if yeah, if you're talking to a potential client and you're you're not using these polite expressions or this polite way of speaking and communicating you know they might say I don't want to work with this guy he's a jerk (laughs) yeah right (laughs) right um maybe (laughs) just a quick little um vocabulary thing you said people are standoffish like um so some of the people watching the video they might not know that expression how would you explain like what is how do you recognize when someone is standoffish um, I would say is another word for how they're being cold towards you, so they're not being close towards you, mm. close to you. They might be not coming around you as much anymore, mm. spending more time, more there's more distance between you two, I guess. You okay, say. yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like like they're really like avoiding. Not it could be avoiding you, but you can definitely tell that they're not enjoying being in yeah, your company. Yeah, your company. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, now, what about? Um, some tips for people who maybe they're afraid of being unintentionally rude, like they don't feel like they're being rude. Mm -hmm. um, And maybe they're a little worried about that. Like what tips would you give someone um, who wants to be sure that they're not unintentionally being rude? Right. Okay, so a good one I can think of is in terms of making requests. So okay, yeah. when you're asking for help or something, I mean, it's something you have to do like almost on a daily like, basis. All the time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, some persons have the tendency of just giving like a direct command and maybe just adding please at the end of right, it. Right, yeah, thinking, uh, thinking that's polite. If I say yeah. please, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it might not be seen as that polite. So in terms of using a, a verb, like modal verb, like could, you know. Okay, yeah. So instead of, you know, give me the plate, please. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, could you please give me the plate? Could, mm. you, could you please hand me the plate? Something like that. Using that could, it, it softens your request for help. Because, yeah. you know, you don't want to do it in such a way as like you're bossing the person around. You're being domineering. Yeah. And you want the person to feel more inclined to actually help you. Right. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So that's one. Another one that I think is often overlooked is body language as well, because yeah, okay. um, when you're communicating, your body language says a lot. And if your body language is not in sync with what you're saying, right. in terms of, you know, maintaining eye contact, nodding, mm-hmm. you no, know, not folding or crossing your arms. Things like that, smiling during the yeah. conversation, that helps a lot in terms of politeness. Another thing would be being more sensitive. Mm-hmm. So I, I, when I was doing some research on polite English and stuff, I found out that the Dutch and, and Germans as well, right. they're, they're very direct and like they don't mince words. They just say directly. Yeah, so if you right. ask them for something, they'll say no without like any explanation yeah. based on my research. Like... But, you know, you need to be more, a bit more sensitive, especially when you're giving, like, feedback and right. giving your opinion on something or telling someone what you think, you know, mm-hmm. could kind of beat around the bush a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you have a bit more tact and so you aren't considered, you know, rude. Yeah. Also, like, when you're giving your feedback, there right. are sometimes words you can add to make it a bit nicer yeah, yeah yeah like 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 what are so, some examples so for example you know like even a simple okay you say i'm not fond of i don't know this drawing right yeah or you can say i'm not too fond um i don't know just those little you know or there are some issues with this or there are mm. few issues instead mm. of just saying there are issues you know you add in a few to soften yeah like to minimize it a little bit yeah yeah okay yeah Yeah, of course there are times when you need to give strong counsel but in general when you're having a conversation every day with your colleagues you don't want to you know be burning bridges like that unnecessarily so yeah being more sensitive thinking of how your comments affect persons whether positively or negatively if you're giving someone feedback on maybe their clothing or 
you know, hairstyle or something. Yeah, yeah. Thinking about, you know, think, taking the person's feelings into consideration and trying to think of how would it affect you right. if it was said, if it was the other way around. And, yeah. Like if they said, if they, if someone said that to you, how would it make you feel? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of empathy as well. Like, like putting yeah. yourself in the place of the other person to, um, right, right you know, think, think before you speak, basically, which exactly. is sort of good, yeah. you know, common sense advice um, in any case, right? To, okay, so that, that's really good. Yeah, to just think about, um, yeah, especially I think when working with like English speaking cultures, we, we are very big on politeness and indirectness. And English. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and there are some cultures where they prefer it's actually considered better to be direct and frank and yeah, you know yeah. an, an expression we have in English brutally honest exactly and I think that's, yeah. that's I've heard that that's sure like that you have to be if you're beating around the bush you're being like that's considered rude yeah yeah because yeah. you're not being yeah. honest <laughs> exactly right. um so so yeah there is a lot of cultural differences sort of wrapped up in this notion of politeness but if you're yeah if you're dealing with English like sort of English speaking cultures we do tend to kind of lean towards the yeah. politeness side of it. Right. Good. Okay. Great. 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 Um, Leandra, I just want to say thank you so much for, for this conversation um, because it was very interesting. Um, and I think it's going to be useful for a lot of people in the speak English community um, because, because a lot of them work with Americans, different nationalities and politeness is definitely a hot topic. Yeah. So thank you yeah. so very much for all of your time and your advice. Yeah. So thank you for having me. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Okay. So I, so I hope that you really enjoyed that interview. I had a lot of fun, um, talking to Leandra. If you don't know, Leandra and I, we actually met on Facebook in a group for, um, English teachers who make videos on YouTube. So I definitely want to encourage you to check out her site and I'll put the link to that in the notes below this video. Um, but also to, to go over and to actually check out her book, The Culture Sensitive Phrase Book, um, because there is a phrase book and there's also a workbook. And it is, um, I had a look at it and personally I think that this is just a really useful resource for helping you to avoid those situations where you, the way that you speak could be perceived as rude and the book will help you to improve those situations, to use the language and the attitudes that, um, that help you to, to speak English in a more polite way, to improve the relationships, to maybe get more clients or better clients and just to to enjoy the the conversations that you have more because people are friendlier, people are more open with you, people enjoy talking with you in English because you are polite and friendly in English. So definitely go over, I'll put the notes, uh, put the links, sorry, in the notes below this video. So you can check out Leandra's site. You can get a copy of the culture sensitive phrase book and the workbook and you can just start becoming lovely and friendly and polite in English. I'm sure you're very polite already and very friendly, but um, you know, there's always things that can be improved and politeness really is one of those mm, complex aspects of speaking English because it's culturally connected, uh, it's connected to the language, and like Leandra said, um, just putting please on the end of your sentence is not always sufficient. So um, enjoy that, and I'm going to tell you I will see you next week for a new Speak English with Christina episode. All right, you guys, have a good day, and I'll see you next time.